Award-winning director Tom Henry, CEO of Dragon Films, is having a casting call for one of the biggest action films in the city of Detroit. Casting for Tom Henry's next action film, Deadly Retribution, will be Saturday, October 16th. TV, film, music, the whole entertainment spectrum, is you get a chance to meet people who are on that come up as the next superstar or the next artist that's going to be of note. I remember working back at Henry's Palace here in Detroit with a young Anita Baker when she was in a group called Chapter 8, and then had the honor years later to work with her on the um, album Rapture, as you can see over my shoulder, and it went on to sell 5 million copies. I remember Kid Rock. He was at the Detroit Music Awards one year on stage doing this thing. I had no idea who he was. Uh, bumping into Eminem at the various events around the city as well, when my only thing at the time was thinking about was where can I eat? But we had an event that he was a part of, and I was more focused on trying to eat. That's a whole other story. Um, and today we're going to introduce you to someone who I feel is going to be in that long list of people who I just mentioned, who you're going to say, I remember when. His name is Rico Elliott, a Rico L Entertainment. He's a producer, um, CEO of a company, Rico L Entertainment, and other surprises that we'll introduce you to in a minute as well. So stay tuned because I believe this is going to be a fascinating interview with someone to watch. You were warned to back off, but you didn't do it. Now you've unleashed a demon inside of me that I've kept hidden for years. Big mistake. Now I'm coming for revenge. And I promise you, it'll be lethal. Mr. Richard Rico L. Elliott of Rico L. Entertainment. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Well, how are you? Doing great. Doing, I've been anxious to have you in our seat because um, there's some exciting news coming up a little bit later that you want to share with us and all. But just to get an overview, can you tell our audience about you and Rico L. Entertainment and things they would like to know? Absolutely. First of all, I'd like to state that I am a native of Detroit, uh, born and raised in Detroit lived in different areas around the city, 
I want to say that uh, I was a graduate of Cass Tech High School. Mm -hmm. I went to Detroit Institute of Technology and also obtained a degree from the University of Maryland. I also was in the military, but Rico L Entertainment is a company that I thought about for a considerable amount of time. I wanted to make sure that this was a venture that I wanted to embark on. So in 2015, I came up with the name. I figured I wanted to do entertainment. I didn't want to be stagnant in just one genre of the industry. I wanted to be able to cover film, TV, radio, commercials, promotions, sports. I wanted to be able to go through any genre that I wanted with my entertainment company. So in 2018, I pulled Rico L Entertainment into reality. Okay. And at this point, I have some artists that I'm looking at, some song artists. I have some individuals who want to do a little acting. I have some people that want to venture out into other different realms, and we'll probably discuss those a little bit later. But Rico L Entertainment is my vision, it's my life, and it's my destiny. Now you you mentioned briefly acting. Now you yourself are uh, you're you're an actor as well. Okay, give us a little more um, insight into that. What did you? What some of the films you've been in? And well, I'll tell you. I'm going to go through the full genre of the thing. There's a man by the name of Tom Henry, who is the CEO of Dragon Films. Tom, I used to see him around all the time, and I never knew that he was an actual film director and producer. I didn't know that. So one day I was working out in the gym and he came to me and he said, hey, I have a part for you. And I said, okay, what kind of part do you have for me? So you know, I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, what does he want me to play? And he said, don't worry, I got the right part for you. I want you to play a hitman. And I said, okay, that's right up my alley. <laughs> and then he said, uh, you're not going to have a script. He said, this particular role, the person's actions speak louder than any words that they can ever utter. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I'm going to have you do certain things that other people haven't had anybody else do in any previous films that you've seen before. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what would that be? He said, just trust me. Mm -hmm. Just trust me. That's how I like, that's how I like time. Yes. I said, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I have a role in a movie called The Act of Vengeance. I played the number two hitman, Kango. And then I had a role in another movie which is called Fatal Brew. The Fatal Brew portion, it was a little limited. It wasn't a leading role because of some situations that happened that required me to only have a limited amount of time. Okay. But it was a very good adventure. It was a very good situation. It made me sit down and really think about the industry. And that was one of the reasons as well as me focusing on bringing Rico L Entertainment. So, so it was the initiative on Tom's end that got you into like the kick your dream in the high gear. Absolutely. When I saw the enthusiasm, when I saw, you know, the if you could have seen Tom's face when he talked about Dragon Films, when he talked about movies, when he talked about commercials, when he talked about documentaries, when he, back then Tom was even talking about something that we call now podcast. He didn't have the vernacular, the verbiage for it, but now we can we talk about it and they call it podcast. Okay. And I've always been fascinated with the movie industry on how things were done the music industry, how things were done, the media industry, and the overall entertainment industry. Okay. And that's why I decided to dabble in it and to raise up Rico L Entertainment. Now with the Rico L Entertainment, again, are you going to use your acting, um, when you get acting jobs, will it be under the Rico L Entertainment banner or you be part of whatever that company is at the time? Well, if I am lending myself out to assist in any type of acting, 
then th that would not be up under Regal Oil Entertainment due to the fact that it's not me. Mm -hmm. Now, if that was a film that I was producing, of course it would be up under Regal Oil Entertainment. But I would lend myself out to anyone that came to me and said, hey, I need your help, or I want you to play this in this particular film. Then I would go up under their banner. Now, now backing up a little bit with the acting and all, you and Tom came up with a signature move for your character that to this day, that was that movie was shot, what, 2012, I believe, right? Absolutely. And to this day, people are still talking about that signature move. So can you give a little insight into that and how it came to be? And first of all, how did you feel about doing that? You know, that you, I call you the gentle giant type of thing. You got this bulky presence and all of that, but you're very down to earth, more philosophical in person and all. I'm sure, quite sure you can, you know, do some damage if it came down to it, but you're more mellow than what your character was. So how did you approach doing that character and talk about that signature move? Well, first thing I would like to say, because now the visual for me, I'm not as big as I was due to the fact that I had COVID a year ago. So that took a toll on me. So now instead of me being 250 and bench pressing Buicks, and <laughs> like he would like to say, and just throwing around thousands of pounds of weight, mm. you know, I have to rebuild. I'm in 210, but I'm coming back, and I'm coming back strong. But the signature move that Tom told me about, he said, a neck breaking scene. Mm -hmm. So, of course, myself, I'm trying to figure out a neck breaking scene. And what he stated was is that I was going to rotate the neck and do a total 180. So I'm thinking to myself, now how is that going to happen? And he said, again, the famous words from Tom Henry, trust me, yeah. just trust me. <laughs> that's that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened was the actual framework is what really sold it and his positioning. I'm not going to give away his secret, uh -huh. but the way that it was done was unbelievable. And the actual outcome was even more believable. The audience because, reaction. Yeah, yes. because if <laughs> if you are not a person that's on the set and see the frames that we did, you would never believe that this would have happened. Because it just the way and the precision of the neck being turned and the actual cracking noise uh -huh. of the neck <laughs> and the facial expression of the other actor. It was unbelievable. That's something that I haven't seen in any major film. Right, family. right. So it, st it stands out again to this day. Kendall, what do you got to say about that? And are you still approached about it? People see it and say, I remember you from this in, in the movie or not. Well, I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people do. They'll, they'll see me and say, man, you know, how did you guys do that? How, how, how did you do that? Did you really break the neck? It seems like you really broke the neck. And I tell yeah. them, I said, no, it's not the fact we broke, broke the neck. It's the fact that there's a person by the name of Tom Henry that really knows how to create certain types of scenes and get the real out of it. Okay, that's great. So now, um, we're gonna get back to acting in a moment as well, but I wanna get there, because this thing, like I say, I'm excited for you, proud for you as well, so we'll get back into that, but I wanna get a more insight to the Rico L Entertainment. Absolutely. You're gonna be a producer, promoter, writer, director, all of that into developing artists, I take it, right? Yes. Now, what are you looking for when it comes to an artist, and what should they already have on the case before they even think about emailing you or approaching you on the street? The first thing that any artist should understand is that they need to be unique. Their sound needs to be unique. Their walk, their talk needs to be unique. When people are artists, Unfortunately, in the realm right now, there's a lot of copying. Everybody wants to be like the next person. But when you have your own unique sound, your own unique niche, that's what sells you and your signature move. A signature move could be a dance move, it could be a hand wave, it could be a certain facial expression, but you have to have those things. Now, last but not least, 
you must have the utmost confidence and the ability to believe in yourself and believe where I'm going to take you. I have a saying, fear is not an option. It's not an option. And that is something that you have to step out on, on faith, in order to be able to accomplish and do. And also, this has got to be something that every day that you wake up, this is what you think of. So Rico L Entertainment will take someone, let's say um, you're going to a club or you're out at a karaoke bar and you see someone with that raw talent, but some of the other elements may not be in there, the confidence or the style or the or whatever, would you be able to pull that out? Would you see something in that artist to say, if I work with you, I think we both can get to the top? Well, if I view somebody, if I was to go into a club, a karaoke bar, even a concert, you know, there's a lot of local people in Detroit that hold minor concerts. Um, I can pretty much look at that individual and see if I can pull something out of them. Once you have communication with a person, a certain type of communication, you can learn what they're about and you can learn just by having a certain type of vocabulary. Okay. If they are really willing to go the distance and this is something that they really want to do. Everybody has rough corners, they have rough edges. And sometimes it takes another person to help smooth those rough corners down and those rough edges out. So would you look more for determination versus talent, because talent can be learned, or determination is something that's already there? You have to have both. You have to have some talent and some determination. Think about this. There's plenty of people that are walking around that have talent that you may see on a daily basis. Yes. That, wow, you should have a record deal. You should have an acting career. You, you, you should be a news anchor. You should do voiceovers but they never went the distance. Why? Because they didn't have the determination. And that's one of the things that you have to incorporate. It's, that's something that's bred inside of a person. That's not something that you make up. That's not something that you acquire. Just like yourself inside the music biz, you had the determination, you had the drive to start it, just like myself. Regal Entertainment. I had a determination in the drive, just like Tom Henry, just like a lot of others. We had the determination, the drive, we initiated the vision, now we're accomplishing the vision. Yes, and, and one of the things I've told you personally, I think you are a natural, gifted um, interviewer. <laughs> you are someone that deserves to be on TV. Now you have a show that's about to be, um, I guess, started, restarted. Um, give us some information. Right. The name of the show is called Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal. The show was on Comcast for a couple of years on Channel 90. The, it was myself and two other partners by the name of Cornbread and Tom <laughs> that initiated Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal. And what we really wanted to do was to actually showcase the city and the surrounding areas, different things that are going on, talk about different topics, whether it's what's happening with police force, what's happening out in the streets, what's happening in our local government, uh, people that may become new artists, people that may become new promotions, those are the things that we like to cover. So we're going to start the show, it's going to emerge back in 2022. The determination of the beginning, the mid, or the end has not been nailed down yet. But okay. however, it will be emerging in 2022. Matter of fact, I posted up some information in reference to auditions that will be coming up, the individuals that we're looking for, where they can send their bios, their headshots, their resumes, all the information that they feel that we need uh, to make a decision on them to come on the show. So now the, the show, Detroit Uncut the Real Deal, will deal with more than just the entertainment part. You're saying you mentioned police brutality, city elements, and things like exactly. that. Exactly. So by the way, where will it be shown at? Is it an internet show only? Is it going to be cable or what? Well, at this particular time, it used to be cable. But we're possibly going to make it an internet show. We're going to go look at many different levels okay. and see 
where we need to place it because we want to get the maximum amount of volume, the maximum amount of subscribers, people to come on to see the show, to like the show because we want to take this show to many different levels. So it's going to be a mixture of everything. Entertainers will be on one week, you'll be talking about politics the next. You'll have a serious segment one minute and then it might be something more lighthearted. You know, so it's a show everyone can enjoy. Yes, it doesn't matter anything about who you are, where you come from. We want to produce a show that everyone gravitates towards. We want people to, when it's this time slot for Detroit Uncut, the real deal, we want them to leave the news, we want them to leave the sporting events, we want them to leave all the world situations and come to Detroit Uncut, the real deal. For that show, what, what would be an ideal interviewer, I'm sorry, guest for you to interview? I think you're a natural interviewer. If you've had your choice of someone to sit on a set with you and say, finally, I get a chance, who would be that ideal guest? I'm going to tell you, my ideal guest on Detroit Uncut, the real deal, because we shoot high, mm -hmm. we reach high, would be Barack Obama. Wow. That would be the person that I really would feel like I achieved. Because of the fact that Barack Obama has done, he did so much in his eight years. He transitioned this country from a very dark time into a lighter time. He had poise, he had understanding, he had care and commitment and dedication as the president and the commander in chief. And that would be my ultimate interview, would be with Barack Obama, wow, and slash <laughs> Michelle Obama. Oh, okay. I like that. That is aiming high. He raised my That's eyebrows right. and all that. That is great. So some of the elements of, uh, who are some of the people behind the scenes? I know you have, like for the audition panel, you have a young lady named? Shannon Coffey. Oh, okay. Uh, Shannon Coffey is a, I can just say, use the word, she's a plethora of everything. Shannon Coffey owns a consulting firm, business consulting firm. She owns a notary. Shannon has two master degrees. <laughs> uh, she's well-versed, uh, just totally knowledgeable. A lot. And she is also the president. I made her the president, <coughs> functioning president mm -hmm. of Rico Dell Entertainment. Due to the fact that she has a lot of energy she has a lot of knowledge and she has the dedication to get things done. And when I need the ball to be picked up and ran with, she is very proficient in making sure that things get taken care of. I like that. So great, great. Nice to have someone like that on your team. Where do you hope to have Rico L Entertainment and Detroit Uncut go in the future? What are some of the um, visions that you have for it? I'll put it like this. There's not a corner that I don't want to turn. There's not an upside that I don't want to hit. I want Detroit Uncut, the real deal. I want Rico L Entertainment on the lips, on the minds, and in the hearts of everyone. Okay. I like that answer. So you just smoothly go and you can, you, can, you can hold a great conversation. This is why I say next year at the Detroit Music Awards, you're going to be there. I, I got to Shanghai you to get you in there, or you got to do this, because you are a natural. And with some of these acts that are coming up, as I told you before, at the Detroit Music Awards, which we cover every year, a lot of the artists, I have no idea who they are. But you have a way of talking to people and just getting right to the essence of it, like you're the best friend, and you just met them five minutes earlier and all. So we got to have you on there and all that. So that's the main thing I'm saying. You're drafted, Rico. Um, now, the big, um, first before we go into that, the big news and all, I want to take a break right here. We're going to talk about some very exciting news. As I said, I'm very proud of you on this, and I want you to give some much detail as that. But we'll be back right back in a second.